Okay, so um, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we have the uh, following identities that we want to verify. The integral from zero to one of x to the power negative x is equal to the infinite sum of n to the power negative n. And these pair of identities, um, there's a special name to it. This is actually known as the sophomore's dream, which was discovered by a uh, mathematician, Johann um, Bernoulli in 1697. Um, it's also a contrast to the freshman's dream, which is sa which says that the uh, the binomial x plus y to the power, well, quantity to the power n is equal to x to the power n plus y to the power n. And although, you know, that... Um, the freshman stream is um, can be quite proven. Um, there's no really sh sure way on um, trying to prove this. This is one way to show that there is um, this is true. So the steps to do this in order to um, carry out this proof is that um, what we want to do is we want to find we want to start with a generalization for the integral. Rewrite that in terms as an exponential function then express that as a form of a power series and then um, term-wise um, carry it out um, integrating it using integration by parts. So that's pretty much the steps on um, the way we're going to prove, prove the, um, the right-hand side of the expression. So with that, let's actually carry this out. Start out with the generalization. I'll call this, um, I'll call this generalization as a function of s. Um, well, a, I mean, in, very, in terms of a. s of a is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power negative a times x dx. And now what I'll do is that I'll rewrite x to the power negative a um, times x as um, in a form of an exponential function. So when I carry this out, we can say that this is e to the power ln of x to the power negative ax. And of course, using your rules for natural logs, you move the exponent to the front of the, um, the natural log function. So we have negative ax and then times ln of x. Now what I'll do is that we know that um, the power series representation for e to the power x is defined as, um, for example, I'll write this as e to the x. We know that the power series representation is written as follows. Starting from our index at um, zero, we know that this is uh, x to the power n and then divided by n factorial. So if we were to substitute this for um, e to the negative ax ln of x, so that series representation will be written as, um, so in the parentheses we'll have negative ax and then ln of x and to the power n and then we divide this by um, n factorial. And how about I um, carry out this little um, simplification so that I'll actually um, distribute the n's as the exponents for what's in the parentheses. So then we have that, um, of course we have our infinite sum, but then we have a negative, a negative a, but this, we have to write this as a negative one to the power n, and then a to the power n, and then we can just leave the ln of x to the power n the way it is, and then we just divide this by n factorial. Now we can actually just carry out the substitution. So therefore I have that, um, so I'll just rewrite this again. S of a equals our generalized integral zero to one of x to the power of negative uh, a times x dx. And so we can write this as, um, so we can actually just, I can actually just write the sum, the summation outside and all the terms depend that are, um, that carries the n does not depend on the integral. So that just goes outside. This can work using um, uniform convergence. So that means, um, what we really have is that we have this integral. Well, really, first we have the summation, but I can actually factor out the negative one to the power n. Then we have a to the power n, and it's just divide this by n factorial. And then we have our integral zero to one of um, x to the power n. So actually, there's supposed to be an x to the power n over here. So, oops, sorry about that. x to the n, a to the n, and then ln of x to the power n like so okay there we go now the now things um are coming together so that means um xn and then multiply with ln of x to the power n dx all right so now let's actually um to perform this let's actually carry out a u substitution so i'll actually define uh we'll let this time we'll actually let um negative t 
equals the um, the natural log of x. Okay, so of course we want to solve for x so that way we can substitute things back so the new integral will be in terms of t. So when we actually perform it, we actually try to solve for um, x, we get that this is just negative um, or e to the power negative t is equal to x. And I have to carry out the, um, the differentiate both sides. So I'll get that this is negative dt equal to 1 over x dx, but I want a dx on its own. So what I'll do is that um, I can, well here, let's, let me write it like this first. Um, so this is a negative 1 x dx. I just simply just divide negative 1 to both sides. What I'll do is um, I'll just multiply the x to both sides. So I'll get um, negative x. Well, multiply by the negative as 1. So negative x dx. And then substitute that x with e to negative t. So then we have that this is um, the new substitution negative e to the uh, negative e to the power of negative t dt is equal to dx. Okay, so from there, now we can actually perform some substitutions and um, carry on forward. So we have a new integral that's um, in terms of t. So s of a, it's equal to our infinite sum, equals zero. Um, so we have negative one to the power n, then a to the n divided by n factorial. And of course, we're going to have to calculate our new bounds too. So when one is equal, when x is equal one, do we have that this would be um, zero? And then when we have zero, then it's got to go towards infinity. And so we'll just um, put everything back for the new terms in t. So we have e to the negative t, then to the power n, and then we have the ln of x, which is just um, negative t to the power n. And of course, substitute with our dx, which is just um, negative e to the negative t, or, and then dt. Yeah, they should really like that, but that's totally fine. Okay, of course, I can actually carry out the substitution, or carry out the calculation even further. So, um, keep going, writing the same thing again. However, for here, so even though we have, um, so we have e to the negative t to the power n, Next, we have, um, we have there should be the n, but this is, would be a negative one to the power n and then t to the n. And of course, we still have our negative e to the negative t uh, dt. So keep going forward. We have a negative one to the power n, there, so that can be moved out outside. That integral does not depend on n, it depends on t. However, we also have a term with a negative one to the power n, so they share the same base. And we can actually just combine the, um, the terms for the exponent together, so this will be double. So let's see. And then we have negative one, but this time we have two to the power, or uh, negative one to the power two times n, a n, then n factorial. And of course, I can carry out um, some calculations even further. We have to switch the bounds since we have an infinity as a lower bound, which is not possible. So um, the integral will be negative. There's a negative over here that'll cancel. And what I'll do is that they share the same base e, so we have e to the power. Um, negative, what well, I can factor out the t, negative t, so this pretty much means that we come down to that it's um, um, negative t times n plus 1 dt. And then, we'll, and, well, actually, don't forget, there's also the t to the power n as well, so times t to the power n dt, and we switched our bounds, so we get this is 0, and then this is infinity. Okay, and then also, one more observation to make over here, of course, is that, um, I think I can go within this line, it should be fine. We notice that since we have the power 2n and our base is negative 1, any, for, any, for any terms for n, um, no matter what it's going to be, you're always going to end up with even an even exponent, but negative 1 to the power of even exponent is always going to be 1, so we can actually just exclude this term and just leave it as a to the power n divided by n factorial. And then we still have our integral to um, evaluate e to the negative t, then n plus 1, then times t to the power n dt. Okay, and now the next step is that we're actually going to perform yet another substitution. This time I'll let u equals t times um, n plus 1. And of course, we need to substitute things in terms of, um, substitute t in terms of u, so let's actually do that so that way uh, we have, um, let's say I divide the n plus 1, so I'll have t is equal to u divided by n plus 1, and don't forget I have to carry out the differentiation on both sides, so I'll get du is equal to 
n plus 1 dt, but I want a dt by itself when we do the substitution, so therefore I'll get that this is just uh, du divided by n plus 1 is equal to dt. Now from there we can actually um, carry out some pieces, uh, well rather substitute some pieces. But also don't forget that we also have to calculate our new bounds, but however if you set um, t equal to 0, you get that the new bound would be uh, zero again, and if you plug infinity for t, you'll get that u is um, infinity. So no, um, there's really no changes from there. So then now, now we just rewrite the same thing. Um, n is equal to zero, a to the power n, then divided by n factorial. Um, now we have our integral, so the same bounds. So now we would have e to the negative u and then substitute the tn, so that would have to be uh, u divided by n plus 1 to the power n, and then of course multiply with our dt substitution, which is du divided by um, n plus 1. So we can keep going further, um, do, do some even more um, simplification. Okay, so e to the negative u, that's fine. So now over here we have, um, this will be u to the n, and then I can actually combine some, um, I'm actually going to take another step further. So n plus 1, so we uh, distribute the exponent to here, so we have n plus 1 to the power n. That has the same base over here from this side, so I can actually add a 1 to that exponent. So now we would have n plus 1 to the power n plus 1 d, um, du. n plus 1 to the power n plus 1, that's basically just, um, that's just a constant, it does not depend on, um, integral in terms of u so that can just be moved outside so um, n is equal to zero we have um, now n factorial and then n plus one to the power n plus one it's just a denominator so and then the numerator would be a to the power n so then we have the integral um, zero to infinity of e to the negative u and then u to the power n uh, du so we're getting closer to our um, goal so now um, there's some things that we want to um, establish. So I'll just write this as a fact. So we know, um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use um, the properties of gamma functions. So we know that gamma of n plus one, that's um, equal to the integral from zero to infinity. And if I write this out, if I were to plug some pieces, let's say we have that u and then to the power n plus one, subtract with one and then multiply it by e to the negative u du, okay? And then, um, of course, the ones will cancel, so we have that this is just the integral from zero to infinity of u to the power n, and then multiply by e to the negative u. This is just the standard definition of a gamma function, and that's actually defined to be equal to um, n factorial. So, we see that we can just replace this integral with the n factorial, so now, um, of course, just gonna rewrite some things again a second time. Well, I don't know how many times, it's, not, it's really more than twice. Uh, so let's see, n factorial, n plus one, n plus one, then a to the power n. So we, um, so far, just reiterate that this integral, um, u n du, that's just equal to our infinite sum n is equal 0, a sub n, then n factorial, n plus 1 into the power n plus 1, then multiply this with our n factorial, but we can see that those just cancel each other out. So now, um, all we're left with is just the infinite sum, um, so n is equal to 0, and then a sub n divided by um, n plus 1 to the power n plus 1. Okay. And now, last thing to do is that I'm actually going to change our index. So this time, our um, our starting term will have to uh, will start at one. But that also means that I have to fix the denominator as well. Why don't I write a sub n? It's supposed to be a to the power n. Also did it again over here. Wow. This is supposed to, this is supposed to be some. Now we're not de we're not dealing with sequences. <laughs> and now we have. Um, so if I change this, so we have. Um, a to the power n, well we're actually minus 1 because we just we changed the index and then to the power um, or multiply with n to the power um, negative n and so therefore we found, we found our little um, generalization right over here. So 
Now, the last step to do is we're going to let um, S equals one, or really I, what I meant to say was A is equal to one. So we let A equals one, then S of one is equal to um, this infinite sum. And if we were to plug one for A, one to the N to the power of any exponent, it's always going to be one. So we can just leave that as N to the power of negative N. And we have shown from the, our starting point is that um, if we plug one to here, we'll get that our identity X to the power of negative X. And so therefore we verified that um, the integral of X to the power of negative X DX is equal to the infinite sum of N to the power of negative N like so. And there we have it. Nice. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty cool if you ask me.